when you want to grow by God let me tell you how he starts it doesn't matter whether God is calling you to be a kingdom financier a prophetess an apostle a businessman once you come to the school of the spirit everybody starts with the same course it is as you grow that you are now diverge to your various departments in the spirit the person who is going to become a prayer warrior the person who is going to become a kingdom billionaire are we learning the person who will be a healing evangelist the person who is going to be a professor doing great things for god the person who is going to be a captain of industry once you come to the school of the spirit all of you start from the same training it is as you grow the holy spirit begins to diverge you to various trainings as far as his call and election and ordination for you is concerned but let me tell you how satan deceives people the moment you want to do business with satan he focuses on your desperation and your lust not your passion he wants to distract your passion for god so the first thing he does is to examine your vulnerabilities weapons are fashion what does this person like at this point this lady is desperate for marriage at this point this lady is desperate for a child at this point this lady is desperate for increase at this point this young man is desperate for the prophetic since he had a dream that he was a prophet all he wants is that mantle satan's attack will be fashioned around your desires satan will never waste his time creating a desire around something that does not connect to you or an attack that does not connect to your lust are we learning now if i am not hungry if you want to tempt me with food you are wasting my time and wasting your own time too are we together imagine that you bring baby food what children eat maybe milk or something and you say apostle i want to tempt you with this I will look at you in pity i know something is wrong with you because that temptation cannot work because temptation requires something from you to connect to it are we learning now many of us right now you came for this conference and the truth is that although you have the call of god upon your life you are beginning to transact with this system this godless system and transact with the devil even without knowing how do i know that because you are having a semblance of increase but when we look at your life from a spirit standpoint your spirit man is dying from the day doors began to open as a man of god you cannot remember having a personal retreat for god again but your name is spreading far i tell you it is not breakthrough it is an attack that thing you call open door is an arrow it is designed to destroy your life because a time do you know even the early church faced this temptation the bible says when increase was coming quarrel it was satan that planted that seed among the people certain women began to quarrel acts chapter 6 look they are they are victimizing us the devil wanted to penetrate the apostolic community he said how do i come now these guys are zealous serving the lord how do we deal with this and he said you know what let's use welfare let's begin to plant bitterness let's begin to plant anger let's begin to plant jealousy is someone learning now and he planted that seed and the quarrel began to grow and when the apostles came the goal was not to feed the people evenly the goal was to take the apostolic community away from the things that keep their spirit robust the goal of that attack was not to bring order necessarily satan is not interested in who eats or who does not eat but the apostles detected it and said aha we now see that something the consequences of increase now wants to tell on our spiritual life he said appoint others in this business but as for us we have found what keeps us relevant we have found what keeps us in fire he says we will give ourselves continually Acts 6 and verse 4 to prayer and to the ministry of the word satan lost that temptation let me tell you what would have happened to many of us you get to a point where you say no 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 i've labored too much i can't build this ministry and watch it crumble you know what let me take a retreat from my time of prayer and the rest let's deal with administrative issues when satan finds you in that state he starts multiplying the problem in your church and before you know it you have become a businessman an administrator every other thing at the expense of your prayer at the expense of the word at the expense of your growth because you are still in church does not mean you are with God.
you will not know that you have left the place of your consecration the place of power and the place of grace most people do not know why they lose things eventually i am telling you that the attacks that come to you usually they happen as an end point after satan has distracted you away it doesn't matter what you are celebrating it's shadows it will take time and drop that's why you find out a man can be in ministry for a very long time supposedly doing well but at the expense of his spiritual life satan does not mind your 15 years success it does not intimidate him because in one year after he has laid hold on that which keeps you relevant you can crumble in one year that what you built in 15 years can crumble in one year hallelujah what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world when i started my work with god i had needs i had financial needs i had a lot of other needs but the way god trained us was he took our eyes away from everything including ministry including ministry the focus was on him the focus was not on power the focus was not on anointing the focus was not on healing the focus was not on greatness the focus was not on fame look at me the focus was not on becoming a great man mm -mm. the focus was not on breakthrough and revelation when god calls you let me tell you what he does he takes your mind away from every other thing until your gaze your eyes is fixed on him that's when your progress begins in the spirit when he was going to call moses look at me how did he start the journey with moses the first thing he did was he simulated a burning bush he never spoke to moses about egypt and all of these things until he got his attention only god knows how long it took moses moses said i will turn aside something else had my gaze but i will turn aside and see this great sight and when he saw he said that's it remove your shoes where you stand is holy ground and he began this thing until Moses became a sign and a wonder I know that many of us came to receive restoration and breakthrough but let me tell you this the first restoration you need tonight is not financial restoration in as much as that is important the first restoration you need tonight is not health the first restoration you need tonight is not relationships we are going deep down to show you what went wrong it's like diagnosing a vehicle that has refused to own it used to be a beautiful vehicle carrying many people and for a reason you cannot understand it just stopped the tire still look fine the paint still looks fine the steering still looks fine the stereo is still bringing music but the car is not moving i will tell you what is wrong even as thy soul prospers satan has taken advantage of your vulnerability and your desperation and taking away passion do you know the average young person in church the moment you bring teachings on presence power surrender immediately they shut down it's an attack they do not even know that it's, a, it's an attack once you bring a problem most people will prefer impartation a thousand times to the teachings that build them to become powerful is the reason why people fall down under the influence of oil and hands and rise up and you cannot tell what changed because for someone while he's seen a man of god he's thinking if i receive this anointing now all these guys that think i'm nothing they will see what will happen and that that kind of thinking is already revealing something to you that something is wrong god cannot endorse that kind of thing are we together i look at my life today by the mercies of god and sometimes when i'm alone tears just run down my eyes and i say my god i thank god for this one training to focus on the health of your soul for some of you you began this work with god 10 years ago if you had followed this pattern you would have been mighty by now but you became distracted in the training because you thought the training was for men of god and since you are not a man of god you said my own is i'm a businessman all this thing about prayer the word church mm -hmm, my own is god told me i will handle money at the end of it you who is the kingdom financier you still not had the money and the one you left at the altar praying now has the resources and is still looking at you and say you are still here 
because in this kingdom everything multiplies as the health of your soul your spirit man tells if it is God that increases you even if God is calling you to be a kingdom financier that training bar will have nothing to do with money until you die to self and get to a point where he can trust you with everything are we together many believers in church really do not understand the ways of the spirit and so most times with all due respect we think that the way god lives is that you just come with hunger full of our lusts and our desires and we just say god i am your son you died for me here is the scripture because i can paint a scripture on you to blackmail you oh yeah give me the breakthrough i need a wife i need a husband i need children and your word says the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to you i place a demand unfortunately it does not happen that way everything in this kingdom revolves around the will of god the moment your desire your template your outlook in life becomes in defiance to the will of god it doesn't matter how accurate your scripture recitation is you will never secure the help of god hallelujah i have seen people pray i have seen people fast but i have examined the content of their prayer and fasting and word study and it tells why they don't get answers from it because they are using spirituality to feed lust and god says no even if it is scripture you are quoting i have to examine your heart is it going to be at the expense of the health of your soul listen you have heard me say this my dear people and let me repeat it here in your presence there is nothing in my life today by the mercies of god that i cannot give god nothing nothing when i started with god and god started lifting me i prayed to him i said lord this is a personal prayer from me to you may i never know the full extent of my impact i don't want to know it because it can be distracting if i have that knowledge satan can come to me and say i hope you know you are a very great man do you know how great you are uh -huh. i hope you know that the temptation of great men is to fall down when jesus met satan met jesus he said he took him to a holy mountain and said fall down angels will hold you I have seen the help of God in my life. I have seen the mercy of God in my life. Let me tell you how I found it. I didn't find it by looking for it. I found it by looking away from, from all those things and staying with him. Staying with him. Staying with him. Making your spirit man so large and robust and before you know it you become a magnet in the spirit you will begin to draw the things that even listen 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 let's assume that this man of god is a businessman do you know most times if say for instance just in this example i tell him sir can i design a spiritual growth template for you the man will say no i'm not a man of god i'm a businessman bring things that deal with common sense give me five years with this man eventually i'm not a businessman but i can follow a template that even him as a businessman he will still be behind and he's saying you are not a businessman but what are you doing in the circle of wealthy people the health of your spirit man i'm showing you a key tonight that if you find some of you need to go back home and shelve a lot of useless activities they are not adding to your growth they will not add to your growth i assure you they will waste your time waste your energy waste everything about your life and at the end of it you find out that it looks like you've been making progress but the progress is on to futility but it, there is one thing you can find mary found this he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and you are obsessed about many things. But one thing is needful. Someone say one thing. Shout it, say one thing. Ah, there is one thing that if you find in life, you would have found the key to wealth. You would have found the key to increase. There are things that when you find in life, my brothers and my sisters, the people you now admire today will look for you and call it an honor to stand before you. 
if I ask us to write our prayer request now, what area are you trusting God for restoration? Someone will say, Apostle, as I stand right now, I have lost one billion. I've lost 500 million. And you ask the person, what am I going to do about it? He said, now I'm looking for a loan or I'm looking for someone to help my business. But if I tell you, give me a chance to recommend a part for you out of that problem. He said, Apostle, you are not a businessman. Do your preaching. Jesus that give you money. And I asked the person, so how are you going to come out of this challenge? I have called Senator so, so, so and so. And then he promised to connect me to one foundation abroad. I'm already calculating everything. I hope that give or take at least 200 million will come in. And then when that 2 million comes, I'll do business. And at least in two years, oh dear, listen, let me tell you, the man talking to you is not stupid. Someone else can go before God and say, Father, if you do not open my eyes, I cannot see if you do not help me there is no human way i can come out of this and the lord says you know what leave the issue of business leave the issue of profit focus on me satan desires to sift you and you can throw business and everything and stay and say i have lost everything in my life i will not lose my soul lord let's start again my brother you can be in that place and one idea in his presence one connection in his presence the spirit of god is it not in your bible that the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord you can get up from the, your frailty and step into a conference like this and god will orchestrate that you sit down near a helper and the person says young man what do you do and says i, I I'm, I'm i'm just a graduate he says the spirit of god said i should hold your hand till you are established now when you come back and meet the person who left god to look for success the person will say, no, you are just lucky. I'm sure the, it, you just, you succeeded just because you are in ministry. It's a lie. It is the profit of his presence. I used to think this template only works for men of God. The template of making sure that you are surrendered and staying in his presence. And quite honestly, I used to be concerned because I said, ah, if you stay in his presence praying, building capacity won't you lose in time there are many important things to do i found out that nobody loses with god when your spirit man becomes robust and enlarged you will lay up gold as dust i tell you if you came for this conference trusting god to receive restoration and to be free i am telling you the way out take a minute away from business take a minute away from marriage take a minute away from children away from breakthrough can you take a minute and stay tonight and say god is between me and you this is not the issue of healing again i know that they diagnose me of cancer but cancer you will be a later discussion for when you find him when you touch him when you encounter the god of the bible not the one you hear people saying they met when you encounter the god of israel when he places something upon your life you will go out and in in a moment i'm telling you it will not take that long god will raise men god will raise systems he will give you wisdom we're starting tonight because tonight is is a cry for a restoration of our soul and when you pray that prayer some of you whilst in the place of prayer there are other prayers you will not need to pray again you will go back home and on reaching home someone will call you and say you know what i've been trying to reach you the job is now waiting for you and that's when you find out that it's not that god could not give you the job he has seen that satan wants to use that job as a transaction to steal away your passion to steal away your hunger to steal away your fire and let me tell you this if you hear me saying this thing and you feel in your heart i'm wasting your time it's an attack on your destiny it's an attack there are things only god can do in the life of a man i have studied success from a business standpoint i have studied success from an entrepreneurial standpoint by the message of god i have studied success from a leadership standpoint i have studied success from a spiritual standpoint i have come to a conclusion that it doesn't matter what route you take 
if your soul the health of your spirit man if that is not sorted you will prosper you will make money doors will open but there is calamity eventually waiting for you it doesn't matter even if it's after 20 years you can do ministry without his presence and excel and one day overnight something happens to you satan is not foolish he does not attack in one day he gives you room so that you can continue without god's presence so that you can continue without your fire listen to me i came here by the spirit tonight to challenge you using my life and to honor your sacrifice of coming to this place for some of you what god is calling you to do now he's saying son i've always cried for your attention you've gotten so busy busy trying to make life work busy trying to build a house not knowing that except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain there are people by the mercies of God that I've met in my life today and it's almost like a dream. I would never have imagined that at this point in my life, by what connection would I have gotten to that level? But God for you, when he finds your heart, who is God speaking to? When God can find your heart, there are many things that happen in the secret place that becomes your security. Number one, is a circumcision that happens within your heart because you see the tendencies of men is such that until God vets you even you can deceive yourself the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked oh God bless me and I will bring the money to church it's a lie you are sincere but you are still lying you don't even know the state of your heart the Bible says that the heart of man is deceptive above all things you know what it means to have plenty and it does not affect your passion for God? You know what it means to be lifted and still be humble and remain on your knees? It is not human. It is not natural. It is a circumcision that happens when you stay with him. When God demands that you stay, he is not delaying your growth. When God demands that you stay, he is not wasting your time. My dear sister, hear me. I'm speaking to you by the spirit. Don't let naysayers make you feel that the time invested in God's house, the time invested in building your health, capacity in the spirit, when you plant sometimes the plants does not just sprout and start bearing fruit there are trees like the baobab tree and other trees that would take a long time it will look like progress is not happening one way you know you are working with god is that there will always be silent years in your life years that only god can tell what is happening to you you yourself cannot tell whether you are making progress or not because all the parameters to measure success will be missing and god will keep it intentionally he will teach you to be used to him without things and be comfortable before he brings things did you hear what i said he will teach you to be used to his presence that if i have his presence without money i am still successful if i have his presence without a name i am still successful when his presence becomes your all everything added to it does not distract you again the psalmist said among the many things i desire to restore restore my soul restore my soul for someone restore my soul means restore my prayer life apostle i did not start this way i used to be on fire that fire upon my altar for some of you it was so whilst you were on campus before you became a businessman while you were a faithful member of a fellowship it was prayer every time and by that momentum you were gaining ascendance in the spirit you began in the spirit who distracted you what distracted you now for some family life became the temptation and the bait satan used to distract you or does ministry or does money or does the desire to make it god is the one who designed this system he is not evil to leave your needs unattended to but there is a protocol tonight i came to show you a law that you have been violating that is responsible for most of the losses in our lives when satan comes to you and he looks at the direction of your attention that's what you attack 
when he looks at the direction of your attention and he finds it at fame or money he will attack that area but when he finds your eyes fixed on Jesus that while your account is multiplying your eyes is still on Jesus because you have been trained in the secret place that every time you look away from him the waters will sink you Peter that was the lesson walking on water was not just about a miracle he was teaching you how to be undistracted by the things around you to focus on Jesus when Peter looked away from Jesus and began to look at other things like ministry like growth like whatever it is he sank let me tell you this when I was to start ministry the difficulty was how to be able to raise finances for ministry because I made up my mind that I was going to serve God void of compromise that I would never manipulate anybody for myself or to fund the work and based on the visions that God was showing me I knew that this work would require enormous enormous resources how was God going to help me through this by his mercy I remember times when I would come to God and say Lord what is the key to this and he would teach me stay in my presence there is a curriculum for your growth there is a curriculum for your excelling there are people already positioned there is wisdom to navigate you to the place of grace and power but stay I thank God by his mercy that I stayed the foolishness of waiting upon the Lord it will look like you are not making progress let me say this to you and I submit with all humility I'm about to pray for you now there are many people Lord there were many people those days they were in a hurry to make it now, I don't say this you know being sarcastic I mean if you saw them you would think if they did not do ministry in one year they would die it was like I want to do mini I want to I want to shine I want to heal the sick I want to do whatever and sometimes humanly you'll be tempted to say I hope this is not the way and I'm missing out and he will tell you stay for someone all through January it looked like you did not make progress in any aspect of your life except that your prayer life was healthy except that your word life was healthy please do not feel foolish you are sowing in the spirit you are making an investment in one year God can bring the job and the husband and give you triplets you would turn back and say so what was the anxiety about what was it about hmm. hallelujah many years later by the mercy of God when God began to do the things that he's now doing through our lives I look back with pain in my heart at some of these wonderful people yesteryears I look at their hurry they wanted to make money fast they wanted fame fast they wanted increase fast and you are now wondering so with all that journey where is it because let me tell you this it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow I have learned in my life if this God does not stand behind you to help you you will waste your time and weary your days it will look like you are making progress only that you will turn back and find out that 15 years was wasted you will go around only to find out that you are back to the place you started this is my call tonight we are going to cry the cry of restoration Lord I'm trusting you for houses I'm trusting you for a car I'm trusting you for increase but for tonight restore my soul restore my soul this transaction I have been doing with Satan unknowingly that my increase has been at the expense of my prayer life my fame has been at the expense of my consecration my rising has been at the expense do not allow your growth become a cause to you the key is to give God your heart when your heart belongs to him when Satan comes around you it doesn't matter what he baits you with whether increase or challenges it has no effect on your heart do you know why because you are totally surrendered now let me say this before we pray when you come to Jesus really you don't give him your heart you receive his life that's what happens giving him your heart is not a language of born again it's a language of surrender so that you'll be used by him 
when you now hand over your all he said my son give me your heart and let your eyes incline unto my ways tonight i came to propose a formula a formula that turned this small boy you see by his mercy to what god is doing tonight i don't claim i know everything i don't claim i know everyone but there's one thing that the people that do know their god the people that do know their god it doesn't matter where they start from it doesn't matter who has risen or not risen in their family allow god to birth that circumcision to make out that circumcision within your heart tonight you are a man of god i do not doubt truly the hand of god is upon you but this appetite of wanting invitation let me go for ministry i am a great man put my face on the poster you are transacting with babylon not knowing just because it's a spiritual adventure does not mean you are free take away all those things and stay neither do men light a lamp if you are truly lit it is impossible to be kept in hiding it doesn't matter who victimizes you when you stay and that circumcision happens the gift you receive from his presence is fire that cannot be quenched and when you carry that fire whether as a businessman you carry that fire it doesn't matter as whatever you will excel you will reign that's when you will see that the there is a compensation system i must say this while you are working with god you will lose many things i have to tell you the truth there are many losses that are not demonic they are consequences of sacrifice did you hear what i said please enugu listen to me listen to this man of god while you walk with god you don't start by gaining when you walk with god you start by losing except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and talk to me and when you walk with god there is a price you will lose friends people will misperceive you that is the price you will start by losing a lot to a point you will be stripped off everything that makes you confident in yourself so that your confidence becomes him when he strips you that much it is also a measure of the weight of glory now let me tell you this there is a compensation system at the end of the journey don't feel cheated no matter what you lose in the journey if it is god who is helping you i assure you if it's money you lost if it's friends you lost if it's your reputation you lost don't worry about that by the time he the maker makes you in one day job lost everything the one thing he had was his honor and reverence for God. And even his wife said, Mr. Man, you've lost all. Cause God and die. Job said, why do you speak like this one of these foolish women? He says, all the days of my appointed time. I don't know if I would have had the kind of stamina to wait like Job. Not when after losing my children, my estate, and then my health. Maybe I would have caused God one day to say, God, you know what? I don't trust you. Kill me if you want to, but not Job said i know my redeemer liveth to the point that three men came together and the bible said they sat down for one week they were looking at job do you know what it means to sit near a sick person for one week and you can't talk to the person ah, ah, how did you reduce like this what kind of attack came on your ministry what kind of attack came on your family and ellie who said nah, it's not always about what the person did wrong there are mysteries in the spirit there are times we lose to gain you shed off certain weights i'm saying this to someone because you lost a job you lost friends someone said if you will compromise you will get an oil and gas company work and you refused you thought by the next day a breakthrough will come and sometimes preachers we need to be careful as we teach people there is a process before emergence happens just because you say no to satan does not mean God's answer will come immediately. There are times no answer will come for two years, five years. You will feel foolish for saying no to the devil. But wait. Still wait. You made up your mind that you will stay. And everybody who started with you has gone ahead of you. They call you one day and say, please, we are concerned about your destiny. Tell them I came to church tonight and I had one word. Wait. Wait. Yeah, I will wait to I will wait thank God for your ministry go ahead I wish you well but I will wait 
the ordination upon my life and the weight of glory that I carry requires a building I will wait provided it is waiting upon the Lord I will wait let the circumcision happen and God looks at you and says I want to trust you with nations but because of the background you came from maybe you came from a polygamous background the tendency for pride the tendency for wickedness is there so that it does not destroy you in the future allow me to circumcise you and I tell you while that is happening it will be painful waiting is the hardest thing I know for a believer because you wait in the silence of God as a man of God someone will come for counseling over something that you are going through you will solve their problem by prophecy and then you will still remain in that situation and you are saying ah, ah. somebody came to you and said look I'm trusting God for finances you say let's pray and as you spoke the person sent you a text one hour and said you are really anointed and you your rent has not been paid the person said no you are really I'll come with my friend again so you pray. after praying for 10 people or a barren woman praying and a woman comes with triplets and said I've never experienced graces like this and you say God what of me here is my message for you tonight wait Some of you, are, I'm, I'm wrapping up now. You are about the finish line. Wait. Because you see, if you are to run a marathon and you are the last round and you are tired, they would not say because you went seven rounds for eight, you've done well. You still lost. You and the person who was not in the field will receive the same lot. Shame. I made up my mind that if it is God, bar. I rather be a fool in the presence of men but I will stay with him I have seen the value of his presence I look at my life today and, and, and I don't I don't say this to, to be arrogant I, I hope you don't misunderstand me for arrogance honestly I have seen the mercy of God sometimes when I'm alone I've tried to cry in the midst of people my tears will not just come out so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I'm not a very emotional person but when I try to cry oh yeah come now the tears will not come but when I'm alone because I consider the things he's done in my life. I, I remember that small boy. And I stand and I say, Lord, look what you've done in my life. And it says, teach people what I did in your life. Don't just enjoy it. Teach people that the secret is when you forget about all and stay with him. Master, we have left all. Oh, we, left all. We, left all. we 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 left invitations. We left opportunities. If you ever think you stay with God and become a failure, the formula that was given to you was wrong. But if it is God's formula, as your soul prospers, every other thing will eventually catch up. And sometimes it will catch up so fast. When God began to show us mercy as a ministry, when God began to show me mercy as a person, at a point I was going to say, Lord, what is this? It's like this train is running too fast. But that's what happens when you build capacity in the spirit. In one day, question, how long did it take Job to be restored? Have you read your Bible? Job 42 and verse 10. Read 10 and 11. That's how long it took Job to be restored. All while he was going through that season, ladies and gentlemen, all the people who had capacity to help him were there, but mysteriously they were far from him. Oh, but there is an east wind that can blow help us from everywhere. And in one day, back to back, somebody comes to you and says, Gentleman, you are in this choir. God said, I should give you a house. You will first look at it and say, No, it is a joke. Let me tell you this. I share these stories to inspire you for many years I stayed in one room as a man of God I would travel and preach be kept in very nice places I didn't stay because of luck I was paying for people two bedrooms three bedrooms keeping people paying school fees and God would tell me to stay in one room I said what is all this one again if I've sinned against you, I'm sorry. What, what, what did I do wrong like that? Stay. I remember people will bring vehicles and give me. You see that? Bring vehicles and give me. 
And the Holy Spirit said, no, I can supply. Pray on the vehicle and take it back. I remember a time when a group of women, I was in my room praying. I had, you know how women sing choruses and they're coming to your house. You know that's a serious issue. Once you see them together singing choruses and they, came, they just as concerned mothers, they wanted to know if there was something wrong with me that I was not sharing. When they left, I said, God, is, is something wrong with me? Do you know what it means to be paying rent for other people and you are staying in one room? And I used to counsel in that one room. Oh, I did not hide it. You enter the room and you think it's an office. Only that it's an office with a bed. Well prepared bed. Office with DSTV. And, and free to air. What kind of one room is like that? People will bring cars. I remember I used to climb bike to go for miracle service. Now, everybody's life may not follow that template. I'm only giving you an example to show you what it means to stay until you are made. Hallelujah. Imagine a crowd of people like this and you hear a bike outside and that's me with my Bible. And I drop and the people are looking with shock and disbelief. Ah, is it that these guys are wicked? They cannot buy a car for this man of God? So people offered. There were people who decided to, oh yeah, let's do it. I remember it was a miracle service. The head of protocol is here. When a woman from Lagos sent a Siena and sent that Siena and they dropped it and they called me that a woman had brought a car for me. I said, God, who is this car for? And God said, no, this one is for you. I didn't look at that car. I passed, I went for, for the miracle service. It was when I returned back in the night that I now looked at it. That's when I knew what had happened to me. The string that connects the heart with things was no longer there. This was the circumcision that God was doing. That there is an invisible string in the heart of men. That those are the strings that make you look like a puppet in the midst of things. Money moves you here. Titles move you here. Fame moves you here. God now brought that circumcision to my heart. And I'm honored today. The rest is history. To God be the glory. I cannot tell you the things that God has done in my life today. God carried the lifetime of many people and gave me in one lifetime. Many people. Today we are able to do the things that we do for the kingdom across the nations. Our first crusade, we were not a little more than your choir. After fasting you know, for two weeks, I'm praying. The car spoiled on the way. We didn't have money to call mechanic. He was praying in tongues that got that car back. I, I tell the truth and I lie not. The ladies, everybody was in every department that time. Just find a department that is empty and join. The ladies would climb trees to pluck some wood so that they could cook. And they were still in the worship team. They would quickly cook and rush and go and dress. But today to God be the glory. Listen. so that we do not waste prophetic words and so that you do not shout amen for nothing what many of you need right now is that circumcision tonight and for the next five minutes we are going to be crying before the lord leave the issue of car listen to me i'm telling you how to get the car businessman i know you are owing if you run away from god you would, you are still in trouble are we together my sister, I know you want marriage, you want children. God wants you to settle more than you can. But you stay. The next five minutes, we're going to pray and cry like the 20 and 4 elders. Lord, that circumcision, restore my soul. Restore my soul. Restore my soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that has given me cheap to Satan, everything that has given my destiny, my ministry cheap, someone go ahead and pray for some of you you need to start with repentance for some of you you need to cry and say lord walk upon me take a minute and pray participate in the prayer this is between you and your maker the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us 
and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame someone is crying to God someone who came to church with genuine hunger restore my fire restore my prayer life restore my appetite restore my passion go ahead and pray I know you are a man of God but take away that ministerial regalia for one minute and cry before your maker I know you are a champion in the spirit take away that regalia for one minute I know you are a daughter of Abraham there is an ordination in your life I do not doubt it but someone cry restore not restore my money leave money for tomorrow not restore my car leave the issue of car for tomorrow not restore my reputation leave reputation for tomorrow restore my relationship restore the rate the state of my heart restore my passion restore my fire take a minute to pray oh. Holy, let's let it see who comes in the name of our God. Oh, holy, holy, let's let it see who comes in the name of our God. Oh, Zana. Hosanna, the Sadducee, who comes in the name of our God. The Sadducee, who comes in the name of our God. The Sadducee, who comes. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen. Hear me until you encounter that refiner's fire I sense a very strong anointing in this place this anointing is not for impartation this anointing is is to restore your fire and your hunger let me tell you the truth some of you you are the one delaying your manifestation it is not in God's hand it is at the mercy of your zeal and your passion the day you take God seriously and accelerate the death process through your hunger and passion you also accelerate the manifestation death walks in us that life will walk in you listen listen a man of God once asked me a question and he said what really is the secret of results in ministry he was trying to really investigate honestly he said apostle what will you say is the real secret of having results in ministry is it eloquence in speech is it soundness in communication doctrine is it depth of the word is it prayer is it excellence is it administration is it relationships all of these are the various elements that make for excelling but in, if you were to tell me one key what will it be I told him guess and he said prayer I said no you failed he said what I said no you failed he said what then excellence I said no you failed the greatest key to excelling in ministry is not outside you it's within you the state of your heart with God the state of your heart with God is greater than your prayer life the state of your heart with God is greater than Bible recitations can I tell you you can get everything right and be surprised that it will not work because the state of your heart is corrupt one minute I've stretched you a bit you're going to cry and say father everything that will make me leave you now or the future everything that will make me to dethrone you in my heart 
everything that will make me exalt things above you touch my heart of it right now open your mouth and pray whether it's titles whether it's position whether it's money whether it's increase i show you a formula that controls excellence in the spirit the business of working with god is predicated on death allowing for that circumcision within you to be complete restore my soul restore my hunger restore my prayer life restore my zeal in jesus mighty name we pray in jesus mighty name we pray i pray about many things in my life but there are a few things i found out that it was no longer necessary to pray over them while my hunger was directed to his majesty it also doubled as a magnet attracting many things to my life it is true when the bible says if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness truly all other things all other things all other things i want to make an altar call please no movement there are two altar calls in one i want to make tonight the first cry is spiritual restoration tonight there's someone who came here and whilst you heard me speak you are in the overflow outside the holy spirit in the silence everybody having all kinds of reactions to this teaching but for you the holy spirit was pointing to you and said this is it this is what i've been showing you through dreams this is what i've been showing you through prophecy this is what i've been showing you through the teachings you have been hearing that it is upon the strength of that death that circumcision that pruning that surrender that real restoration increase and advancement happens to you in the spirit in a way that profits you both here and in eternity i want to call two people in one one those who are saying apostle if you will give me this noble opportunity within the next minute or so that we have i truly want to make it right with jesus i've heard people talk about this jesus thing but i've never really taken it seriously but on hearing you teach the holy ghost began to speak to me number two those who are saying apostle i remember making this decision but honestly as it is right now my life is in a spiritual icu i need help fast god bless you my dear sister i see someone coming before the lord with her baby now if you come don't kneel because the space here is limited once the front is filled some of you are already coming before my counting once the front is filled then that will be it you will stand where you are you want to make it right with jesus i want to help her please she's holding a baby so she doesn't fall with her baby you want to be born again genuinely afresh no games no church uh, whatever it is let's celebrate them as they come come i count one to five two those who are outside you can walk to the front of your screens you may not have the liberty to all come in but all of the overflows you can walk to the front of your led and just stand there by faith my life is not my own to you i belong i give myself give myself It's not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you Hallelujah Don't miss any of the sessions When we settle this We can now deal with the dynamics Of the various areas Where you are trusting God for restoration It now makes sense to receive the healing The miracles, the signs, the wonders the prophecies and the impartations if and when you have gotten this law well for someone you need to go back home and listen to this message again this night because i tell you sincerely you have done every other thing right but because you miss this one thing that's why you've struggled in business struggled in destiny if you can get this right many things even before december you'll be surprised you will now see that life is not that hard it is as hard as the absence of divine assistance in your life. 
thank you all of you for coming I believe that many of you are making this decision for the first time and yet there are a number of others there's such a great harvest tonight I know that many others are coming because they desire a rededication now there are two things I'm going to ask you to do one I'm going to lead you to the salvation prayer and once we are done I'm going to lead you their counselors I know there are a number of you uh, I'm sure that the counselors have been prepared they would have some time with you have a word with you and then you're back to your seat please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to this Jesus not Joshua Selman not Reverend Edwin not any of the ministers here it is unto your king your maker say after me Lord Jesus mean it from your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I return tonight restore me I believe that you are the son of the living God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I'm a child of God I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name there are two of you the power of God is coming on you the rest I'm, I'm going to ask you to leave but I just whilst you were praying that prayer I just saw light um, two people the power of God and the reason why that impartation is coming is because there are demonic things around your life let me just speak that word I'm not ministering doing anything tonight this is the assignment God gave me while the threshing floor doing a work of circumcision but for those two people in the name of Jesus wherever you are I stretch my hands now and I declare let that fire let it rest on you in the name of Jesus Christ help the woman let it rest on you and I cause that spirit of infirmity lives your life forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that the reign of darkness goes never 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 to prevail over your life again I set you free every chain holding you I decree and declare be loose from it right now you will experience liberty liberty that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare unto you in the name of Jesus Christ what he says to one he says to all even before the other services where I'll be ministering I decree and declare that everything you came with that has held you down bound you kept you captive you are released from it right now in Jesus name by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen okay now for those of you does that concern the people here okay all of you who are here please look to the screen whether inside or outside you would see a number zero eight zero two six double three seven three seven three you are required to text new life text new life to that number um, and then there are counselors who have been trained to have they would get to reach you and then to follow you up in an organized manner there are so many people and and I'm sure this is, this is the wisest approach so make sure you take advantage of it I will speak over your life now and then you return back to your seat father thank you for these precious ones they have come declaring your lordship over their lives I decree and declare in truth that this relationship this restoration begins for you and it remains so all the days of your life no going up and coming down the Lord preserve you in Jesus name please return back to your seat and for everyone else who has come let me speak over your life in the name that is above all names you came for this conference and as you submit yourself to this law this law of total surrender this law of voiding yourself of any tendency of transacting with Satan to earn success to earn you know a, a great life I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that by the power that raised Christ from the dead everything that he has used to lay claim on your destiny I declare that you are released right now shout a loud amen you are released right now as you go home 
may your testimony arrive your home before you i say to a believer as you go home that before you get to your house let signs and wonders be waiting for you in honor to this world many of the things you have been praying for now that you have gotten the order right may they come to you as speedy answers speedy answers speedy answers in jesus mighty name we pray